Hi test takers, Laura here with STP. The June test is quickly approaching and you may or may not feel fully prepared. If you have any anxiety over this June test, it's completely understandable and you've come to the right place. So in this video, I'm gonna give you guys 15 tips in order for you to feel more confident and more prepared when you go into the test on test day. First, if you're new to my channel or you're returning and you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you smash the subscribe button and notification bell below because I come out with useful videos every single week to help you achieve your best possible score on the SAT. All right, first guys, this video is brought to you by Preply, the first ever digital SAT prep app that's available in the App Store and in Google Play. If you are trying to push your score to the finish line and get some last minute prep in before the test, download Preply now because there's over a thousand exclusive questions in both English and math, and you can work on it whenever you're out and about from the palm of your hand. It's so nice to just be able to go on your phone and practice a handful of questions and target your weaknesses because Preply is designed so that you can work on specific questions that you really struggle in. So I'll put the link up here. Go get Preply today. All right, first I'm gonna start with five general tips to help reduce your test taking anxiety. So my first tip is you wanna hit a home run on a practice before you go into the real thing. So there's nothing worse than having a terrible practice right before the real test. It deflates your confidence. You just don't feel like you're gonna do well. So I want you to take a blue book practice test and take one until you hit the goal score that you wanna get when you go in there. That way you're gonna feel so much better. The wind will be in your sails and you'll know that you can do it. Okay, next tip to reduce your general anxiety before the test is to make sure you're fully prepared the night before. So make sure you have an outfit laid out. I prefer comfy sweats, something that you'll feel really, really comfortable in. Um, and that way you won't have to worry about picking out an outfit the day of the test. It'll just be ready for you. And the same token, make sure your device is left on the charger overnight because there's nothing more anxiety provoking than to realize that your Chromebook or your laptop is like on low battery when you're going into a high stakes test like the SAT. My fourth tip is to make sure you get a good night's sleep. I feel like this is common sense and should go without saying, but please don't try to cram and study until three or four in the morning because then you're not gonna be at 100% of your cognitive capacity the next day. You wanna make sure that you are firing on all cylinders and in order to do that, you do need a full night's sleep. All right, my last and final tip for just reducing general testing anxiety is to make sure you have a plan B. So when you go in to take this June test, have a backup test that you're planning on taking as well. This helps for a couple reasons. One, you'll put less pressure on yourself to perform on this test because you know you have another chance at it later. And two, for super scoring purposes, because you can take the June and then see where you're still weaker and focus on that area for the next test, like the August. So for those of you that don't know what super scoring is, it's taking your best English and your best math score and putting them together. So you definitely want to plan to take another test after June, and that'll really make you feel less anxious. All right, now let's get into specific last minute English tips. I have five English tips for you guys to be ready for the June SAT. So tip number one is to skip to number 15 on the English modules. Now, this is designed to help you succeed because the math sections go from easy to hard. The English does not. You hit densely packed texts quite early on in the modules that you have to read and that take lots of time. So to basically re-engineer things to your advantage, I think you should skip to 15 because then you get all the quick questions out of the way first. And your goal is to accrue as many points as you possibly can within the time limit. So start with the grammar questions, then do the transitions, then the note taking, then you can loop back to the beginning with words and context. 
and that will save those tough reading questions for last. And worst case scenario, if you run out of time on module two, you'll be guessing on a logically completes the text question, which has the lowest success rate out of all of the questions. All right, tip number two for the English. I want you to look for three wrong answers instead of one right answer. If you approach any reading question looking for the right answer, you will undoubtedly at some point or other or multiple times during the test pick a trap answer. So College Board gives a lot of different answer choices that sound really, really great. You need to play detective, think critically, figure out what's wrong with three of them, and that will get you down to the right answer. So process of elimination is going to be your best friend. All right, tip number three for the English is when you are on a note-taking question, that's the one with the bullet points, guys, don't read the notes. So you may already know this, but just to reiterate, with the bullet points, you don't need to read those. Just go right to the question and make sure you pick an answer that answers what the student wants. Now, if the student wants two things, make sure your answer choice fulfills both things that the student wants. Don't just pick an answer that only fulfills half of what the student wants because then you're gonna get it wrong. All right, tip number four for the English is don't read most of the paragraph under any graph questions. Guys, they are time eaters and literally you just need the last sentence or two. The last sentence is great unless there's a transition that starts the last sentence, then you'll need the sentence before it because it's tied into the second to last sentence. But that should suffice as far as what you need to read before you go try to answer the question. Now, some graph questions may or may require the graph, others may not. So just keep that in mind as well. Graph questions are really English questions. They're not math questions. They're not data analysis questions. So sometimes you might not even need to look at the graph. All right, my last and final tip for the English is I want you to spend only 20 to 30 seconds max on the words and context questions. I hate to say it, but either you're gonna know the answer or you are not on those questions. So there's no sense mulling over it for two, three, or four minutes. It's gonna rob you of the opportunity to pick up points elsewhere. So pick your best guess and move on. All right, guys, now we're on to my five last minute math tips before you go in to take the gym. All right, tip number one, I want you to utilize your scrap paper and make sure you're writing out all your work when you're solving algebraically. I know guys, sometimes it might be tempting to just wanna do the work in your head, but I have seen too many students mess up and get a wrong answer for X unless they're writing out their work doing minus five and minus five or dividing by three on both sides or whatever algebra steps you need to do. That is the best way to ensure that you will not make careless mistakes because the number one killer of math scores on the SAT isn't not knowing how to do the question. It's actually making careless mistakes. So write out all your work. All right, tip number two. If you have to do simple computations like 25 times 34, use your TI-84 or whatever graphing calculator you brought with you. For all else, use Desmos. All right, tip number three. There are three key times that you should be using Desmos. You should be using that on systems of equations and inequalities. Essentially, anytime you see two or more equations or inequalities in the problem, you should be using it when you see constants A, B, and or C. Sometimes they might even bring up a constant K. Why with these two scenarios? Let's take a step back and talk about systems. First, it's just easier to type in the two systems and just see what you need. So if they're saying there's no solution, you want parallel lines. If they're saying that it's infinite, you want it to be the same line. So it's just so much quicker than having to do the elimination method or solve a system of equations algebraically. Second, with the constants questions, those are times where you can set up a slider. So you can move the graph with the slider to what you want. And that often is a lot easier than trying to figure out algebraically what the constant is supposed to be. The last time you're gonna to wanna to use Desmos is just on any complicated abstract algebra problems where it feels like it's gonna take you 10 plus steps to solve it algebraically. And in reality, they are gonna give you problems towards the end of module two where it does take that long to solve it algebraically. Just read a College Board answer explanation and you'll see what I mean. 
So oftentimes you can just type it into Desmos and just see what you need to get and it's a lot quicker. All right, tip number four. If you are struggling on a question and it's multiple choice and they're providing you with number answers, you can always work backwards. So take the answer choices, put them into the problem until one works. I would recommend if you approach it this way, you start with B or C because typically they'll give you a range of numbers. So the numbers at B and C are gonna be in the middle of the range. So if I try answer choice B and it's too big, then I know answer choice A is the answer. So it saves me a little bit of time. All right, my last and final tip for the math, tip number five. It, with any extra time you have, I need you guys to go back and check your work. And what does check your work entail? Well, it's not just looking at the problem and trying to find mistakes because that is not effective. Chances are you're gonna look at the problem and it's gonna look great. I want you to actually go back and rework and redo the entire problem. Make sure you get the same answer again that you got the first time. This is how you can get a perfect math score. This is how I got a perfect 800 before. So again, the number one culprit for your math score not being what you deserve isn't not knowing how to do the problems, it's definitely making careless mistakes. So if you can mitigate as many careless mistakes as possible by going back and reworking the problem, you're gonna have the score that you want. All right guys, this is the last test of the 2023-2024 school year. I wish you guys the best of luck on test day. I cannot wait to talk to you about the June test after it happens. Until next time, happy prepping.